Welcome to the ATMN 509 PLC Applications 2 mini project presentation on sequential function chart programming using Logix 5000. Sequential function charts, also known as SFC, belongs to a family of programming languages under the IEC 1131-3, which is an international standard for programmable controller programming languages. As such, it specifies a syntax, semantics, and display for the following suite of PLC programming languages, including ladder diagrams, function block diagrams, structured text, instruction list, and sequential function charts. Sequential function chart programming offers a graphical method of organizing the program. The three main components of, of an SFC are steps, actions, and transitions. Steps are merely chunks of logic, i.e. a unit of programming logic that accomplishes a particular control task. Actions are the individual aspects of that task, and transitions are the main mechanism used to move from one task to another. We will demonstrate how to start a new program. Open up RS Logix 5000 and then you will get a start page. Once this opens up, select a new project. Select the 1756 L32E controller used in our lab and give the project a name, a description and as well as selecting a save directory for your project. After the project opens, you want to select your new modules. Right click compact bus at the bottom of the screen and open up a new module. The select module screen appears and you want to select digital in our example. The input card uses 1769IQ6X OW4 which is a 6 input with 4 relay outputs in slot 1. And the output card is a 1769OW16 which is a 16 output AC DC relay output in slot 2. A good practice is to name the routine that you will be working on. Right click main routine under the main task and select delete. Confirm yes to delete it. Next you will have to right click the main program folder and select a new routine. Give this an original name, description and the type of programming you will be using. This is where you will select a sequential function chart as your programming language. Double click the new routine and a blank program will appear. Next it's a good idea to define your controller tags. Double click on controller tags and the config screen appears. We have learned how to do this in the lab so we won't get into too much detail. For this example we will use a normally open start push button, a normally closed stop push button as the inputs and a light as the output. We will demonstrate a simple programming that by pressing the start push button will turn a light on and off at 0.5 second intervals. The program will turn this light on and off 5 times before requiring the start push button to be hit once more. Back to the main routine. The screen shows the initialization step number 000. Highlight this initialization box and click on the action button on the toolbar to insert a new command. Another box appears to the right of the initialization box. The command output colon equal zero is inserted here. What this does is it sets all outputs equal to a logical zero. In other words, at the beginning of your program, you want all your outputs to be off before it starts executing. Below the step 000 box is the first transition box called TRAN000. Here is where you will handle all your inputs. In this case, you simply type in step 000.done, which means that on the first scan, it will turn off all your outputs, thus completing your first transition and move on to the next one. Next, we click on the step and transition on the toolbar to enable a new command. This moves on to step 001 and transition 001. For step 001, we type in the tag for the normally open start push button. The program will wait until the start push button is hit before moving on to the next step. It follows the graph set approach format learned in previous PLC labs. In step 2, there will be an action on it. When the start push button is hit, the output light will turn on by inserting light colon equals 1. By double clicking the step 2 box, the property screen appears. Here you can enter in the 500 millisecond value for which the light will be on. After the light is on for half a second, the transition for step 2 will simply end with the done command. This takes you to the action for step 3 where the light will turn off by adding in a boolean value of 0. 
Again, by double clicking the step 3 box, the property screen will appear. This is where you can enter in the 500 millisecond off value for the light. Once the program turns on and off for half a second, it will make a decision. This is done by adding in an extra transition condition in parallel with the first transition. Simply cl click on the transition button on the toolbar and then once the new transition appears, click and hold the green branch tab on top of the new transition and drag it to above the first transition box to make the OR branch. At this moment, both transitions say step 3 dot done, meaning that both transitions will end the program but we still have to add a counter to it. You want to count every time the light turns on, so we have to go back to when this happens in step 2. Highlight step 2 and click on the action button to insert a new action command for this step. By clicking on the letter N in the new action box, in step 2, select rising edge from the drop down box. This means that it will execute this instruction once every time it happens. Then we create a variable called counter and type in the command counter equals counter plus one for step two. We go back to step zero and we define the original counter value as counter equals zero as shown. It is kind of like programming in C with a graphical interface. Now we have two, a two actions for step two. One that adds one to the counter and another that turns the light on. Next we go back to the OR branch in step three transition and we add in our logic. The left transition will read when step 3 is done and counter is greater or equal to 5. The right transition will read when step 3 is done and counter is less than 5. If the counter is less than 5, the program will take the right transition and branch back up to just before the light turns on, turning on the light again for 500 milliseconds and adding 1 to the counter value. Once the counter value reaches 5, the right transition will become false and the left transition will become true. When this happens, the program will ignore the right transition and will take the left branch and go back all the way up to just above transition 1 this time. This means that the program will have to wait once again until the start push button is pressed. Step 1 also resets the counter, placing a value of 0 for it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this presentation. I hope this small demonstration has been helpful in understanding how sequential function chart programming operates.